So we've got three dishes we're going to do. We're going to be doing all about the beet, nothing but the beet. So we've got some beautiful local beets here. You can get them in all kinds and colors. Um, I don't know if everyone has seen, but it does come with these beautiful leafy greens. And you can get little sort of Valentine's ones, which are red and white. You can get red ones. You can get golden ones. There's many colors. They're offered and grown and held quite um, globally. They're, they're cooked all over the world. So this is what we're going to be using today. We're going to try not to waste any of it, which is super because everyone, right? So our three dishes we're going to do today, the first one we're going to do is we're going to make a, uh, it's all plant-based today. Not really my realm of comfort zone for, com for cooking, but it's great to do a challenge to try and create some plant-based dishes. So I'm going to first do a soup, and it's going to be a beet soup, and it's going to have some roasted garlic, a little bit of coconut milk in it, really easy, super tasty. I made some yesterday and had it for lunch. It was delicious. The next one we're going to do is we're going to make a beet pasta. So we're going to use the beet greens and beets all in together. And we're going to add some lentils in for some protein into it as well. And then the third one we're going to do is we're going to um, make a beet carpaccio. So you would have a three-course dinner. I would serve it beet carpaccio, the beet soup, and then the beet pasta, or the other way around, whichever you'd like. Or you could just take one of these dishes and make it your new favorite to have with your friends and family. So before we go, um, get any further, I want this is raw beet, right? So we're just going to take it and we're going to chop it up, right? Nice and chunky, nothing fancy. So I have some done here because um, you want to have a good sharp knife when you're doing this because beets are um, pretty tough to cut. It doesn't take a lot to get through them, but uh, you want to have a good sharp knife so that you are not um, cutting yourself. Most people end up cutting themselves with dull knives, not with sharp knives. You'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves today, especially if you're having company over, if you're going out into the dining room, whether you're a professional or an at-home cook, you don't want to have red stained hands. And it's also better for sanitation if you're using anything that's going into anyone's mouth, as we all know. So we've got our, our beets. We're going to add in some onions into it. You can also add um, other root vegetables if you wanted to. You could add celery. You could add carrots. You could add parsnip into it. There we go. Seems Lucas is having a hard time. Okay, so you could add other um, root vegetables. So I'm going to just take an onion, dice that up. Nice and small as well. All right, nice and easy. I did send out a shopping list as well. It's on the World Chef's uh, website if you want to go do a little shopping. I did a shopping list for each of the three dishes. So you I could just that. pick those up yourself. Hey, Lucas. <laughs> OK, I'm back, but I still I don't know what's happening with the camera. I don't know. But I'm back. Let's at least. OK go like that as of now yeah it's all right we're cooking away here so we're getting started on our soup so we've got beets and we've got onions i have this beautiful product it's a roast garlic i love to take garlic and peel it and then cook it down slowly in oil and you can use this to finish sauces to put in your pasta to put in your soups adds a great flavor no bitterness and less likely to burn if you have it already set like this so a beautiful way to do that. So I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to toss them into my pot over here. I'm going to get my pot hot and just add a little bit of olive oil. And once I do that, I'm going to saute these off for a couple of minutes just to sort of get the juices going, start to caramelize them a little bit. And then I'm going to add in my roasted garlic. And then I have a vegetable stock here that I've made that I'm going to add in and let that simmer for about 20 minutes. So Shana, we're going to get that Shana. on the stove. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Like, can you just like summarize a bit what you have done in the beginning since you are not yeah, live sure. together? So some people might have lost it the beginning. Oh, no, that's terrible. Okay. So all we've done is we've just chopped up some beets here. They're raw okay. and some onions. And then we've got our vegetable stock and we're starting with the soup. So we're going to a, a plant-based soup using a coconut milk and vegetable stock. 
and really quick and easy. So we've got our pot on now, and we're just going to add some olive oil to our pot. I see the Canada flag over there. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You got to plug, <laughs> plug and represent, right? So we've Very got good. some onions that are deep frying. You know me. I'm all, I'm all Canadian. I bleed red inside. Oh, everybody does. <laughs> I like to show my colors, I guess, right? That's very good. I had to find a way. And people shouldn't know that I guess I have a, um, a microwave, but I do. So I'm just uh, sauteing these off in a little bit of olive oil. They'll just soften up for a couple of minutes, right? And once they're softened up for about three to five minutes, I'm going to add in the roasted garlic. And then I'm going to add in the vegetable stock. And then I will uh, puree it all and add in some coconut milk. Should I can I ask you something? Yeah. OK. Maybe. Are we there? Yeah. Okay. Do you do you hear me now? <laughs> I do. Okay, great. I just asked that, I, like, be um, because, like, I, I know that beet is a bit uh, sweet. Also, coconut milk is a bit sweet. Doesn't yeah. it, like, make a bit of change on the taste, or it's supposed to be like that? So, when you're roasting uh, the beets, you're going to find that they uh, take on an earthiness. And in the end, we're going to add a little touch of lemon into it to help balance that flavor, mm -hmm. right? The coconut milk is going to add a little bit of fattiness. So this helps build the whole flavor of things together so that you have, you know, your uh, sweet, you have your fattiness, you have your tart, and then you add a little bit of seasoning to it, and then mm -hmm. it'll balance out the whole flavors, right? So we have this beautiful roasted garlic. We're going to just add that into the pot. And these flavors will melt together very nicely. And I'm going to add my vegetable stock and bring that up to a boil. So it's just enough veg stock to cover the veg you have in there. All right? So your soup can sit there happy, happy, and boil away. And we're going to move on, I know, very quickly, to what the garnish is for this. So I have these, and it seems, you know, a little bit different is beet chips. I love them. Um, but you can just take a, a raw beet. And I don't know if it, some of you might have some sort of mandolin or slicer. You can use a grater even on the bigger box. And you just take your beet and you just push it along the mandolin easily like so. And you get these beautiful little sort of sticks. Mm -hmm. You toss them in cornstarch, and then you just drop them into um, hot oil that's at about 325 degrees, and they will crisp up. And keep them in a sealed container until you're ready to serve them to your guests, and you have a beautiful garnish, because the last thing you want is just everything tasting soft, right? You want to think about flavor, as you were saying about having everything sweet. You also want to think about texture and about color when you're making nice plates. All right, so that is our soup. It's underway. It's boiling away over there. And once it's boiled, we're going to uh, puree it in a blender. And uh, then we'll add in our coconut milk. So I want to move on to the pasta. So this beautiful bouquet that we have here is the beet greens. All right, so when you're making a pasta, many chefs and people at home We'll throw these beet greens away. It makes my heart bleed, right? Because you don't want to waste anything. So no waste means using all of the product. So you take these beet greens, right? And you've got the stem and you've got the leaf. So I separate the stem from the leaf just by Should pulling it like so. Yes. There are people. There are people saying that there is nothing wrong with microwave. <laughs> they just say, <laughs> just for you to know. <laughs> I have mixed emotions from people, so I try and uh, appease everyone. I guess, right? So, uh, 
But Canada flag was more just a, a glory for me to have a little bit of Canada in the room, right? It gives me comfort. <laughs> so we're going to just pull the leaves right off the greens here so that you're left with these stems. And again, a lot of folks are going to throw these stems away. No, no, no. That is going to be the base of our saw. Well. Oh, my gosh. Heaven forbid. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean these off. It's really quick. You just pull them between your fingers and... The leafy bit comes off and the rest stays. Now you can do this with turnip greens, you can do it with uh, beet greens, radish greens, collard greens, all kinds of greens you can uh, prepare the same way. You can even do these as a side veg if you wanted and just saute them with a little bit of shallots and garlic and have them as your vegetable, right? But we're gonna go a little further than that. We're gonna make it into a full pasta. So you've got all these stems here, which everyone would say, well, they're not really worth using. But you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut them nice and small because this is going to become your sauce. Sounds crazy, I know. All of this has been washed, though. You need to wash it usually two times because they do grow in very sandy soil. And they are quite dirty and there's nothing quite like chomping into a piece of sand when you're eating your pasta. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't imagine the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how you need to cut your greens. So I have some chopped here already. So this is what we're going to use. And you only need about 300 grams. And you're going to make enough for, you know, a couple of people for dinner, which is great. And then for your leafy greens, you just need to sort of rough chop them because they're going to cut down, cook down really easily. Right? How, so how you does just don't it want taste it. like, Shona, the, the leaf of the... It does the taste beet. like beet, right? So it does mm -hmm. have a lot of the beet flavor in it. Uh, it is still very earthy, um, but very bright in flavor, right? Mm -hmm. So there is no not any bitterness. Some greens, like maybe a turnip greens or other ones, might have a little bit of bitterness to it or rapini. Mm -hmm. But these ones are, are pretty middle-of-the-road flavor as far as beet... Um, bitterness goes. Uh -huh. So you have your beet greens, you have your uh, stems. Again, we're going to put a little bit of onions chopped. We have some lentils. You can cook your own or you can just use the canned ones if you want. And then uh, some roasted garlic. We're also going to, at the end, add a little bit of rosemary to it too, right? Because this gives it a, another sort of depth of flavor, which is really nice. And it gives it that more umami flavor. Okay, so we're going to go to the pot now, and I'm going to show you how to get this sauce started, because it does take a little while for it to cook down, right? So, over here, I'm going to switch. You have also a lot of uh, compliments so far, Shona. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's lovely to hear. That's okay, just what so. every culinary educator should be, is bio talk and fast hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have your heat on your stove. Again, you're going to add in a nice bit of olive oil. Never add your oil into a cold pan. You want to add it into a warm pan, right? You're going to have your heat at high at first and then turn it down because you don't want to burn these because then they will be bitter. You just want to saute them nice and gently. Okay, so we're going to start with the onions. All right, make sure that oil is dancing in there. Right, you see little wiggly lines inside the oil. You know it's doing what it should be. And then you add your onion. You can hear the sizzle. One of my chefs, if it didn't hear the sizzle, he would uh, make me make that noise and go Shh, as I was cooking. It's crazy, I know. But <laughs> those were the days. Very, yeah, like very familiar sound. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then you get your green stems cooking in there, and they're beautiful color, right? And they start to break down very quickly. You still got me? No, we are here, so we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Just because um, earbuds are fantastic things until they fall out of your ears. <laughs> it happens. I still. cook them down pretty well 
But for the magic of uh, the internet right now, I'm going to add in my greens. You're going to put those right on top of there. These take less time to cook than the stems, obviously. It looks like a crazy full pot, I know, but <laughs> it will cook down. You will have lots of space to uh, fit everything else in there that has to go. So you're just going to start to turn that over. Shona, just like a side note, the uh, benefit of the fact that I don't have the camera on is that everyone can see you cooking the full screen, not just the half screen. So yeah, it turned out to be a good thing in our favor. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't okay, need to so. see my face. This is just your beautiful. Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> okay, so once these are cooked down, you're going to add in your lentils. Okay. That liquid will help it a little bit. And you'll add in, once it gets a little bit um, better cooked and the greens are wilted, you don't want to let this get dry. Okay, you want to keep adding a little bit of veg stock and then a little bit of water if you need, just so that it gets to a nice saucy consistency. Uh -huh. Right, so what you, in the end, you are going to have something that looks like this. Oh my God, you <laughs> change. <laughs> right, so it only takes about 15, 20 minutes. And then you have something that's, oh my gosh, delicious, ready to go. The lentils are cooked out, the beans are, or the the greens are cooked down. It's smelling fantastic. And uh, I'm going to just show you quickly the pasta I've done because you can use the beet to make a pasta. I made a vegan pasta. So what I used is I took some of this um, beet puree, and instead of egg, I used the beet puree, a little bit of olive oil, and water. The recipe, again, is on the World Chef's Instagram website link. Oh and it God. comes out of this beautiful pink pasta. So imagine if you were doing a special dinner for someone and you wanted to roll this out, make it into something. You can make ravioli with this dough. You can make, we're going to do a fettuccine. Mm -hmm. right? So I've got my pasta machine here. That I think this is never going to come either. together, but it's going to come together real quick. So that... Is there any questions coming up right now, Lucas, while I'm um, doing no, no questions so far, only people saying that it looks delicious, that it's amazing. <laughs> All right. Same feeling yeah. here, like, it's like watching a magic trick, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this dough, the recipe I have, um, I created this one about a year, a year ago or so, and uh, it works so well. It's so easy to work with. And this is the uh, cheapy little pasta machine. And you just roll your dough out. Right? Everybody's going to stop making sourdough bread and start making pasta now, right? <laughs> oh, my God. So it's, you don't even need eggs for this one, right? Because it's all plant-based. Yeah. yeah. And it's delicious pasta. And you can hang it and dry it if you have, like, a wooden dowel to hang them on. Or you can um, just throw it right in the water. The beautiful thing with fresh pasta, especially if you're making a dinner and you're a little bit stressed out about how things are going to go, the pasta cooks in like two minutes when it's fresh. And oh, I used um, the double O flour, so you see it looks like that, mm. right? It looks amazing. Right? I'm just going to turn uh, off my sauce. We have a question, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, which yes. lent you? did you use which sorry which lentil oh lentil i used uh, uh yellow lentils brown okay. brown they are yellow when they're cooked uh -huh. Good. yeah i just used a canned one ready to go mm -hmm. so then you take this and through again the magic of internet we have this beautiful <laughs> pot to come out the other side <laughs> I love this magic. Right? And then you have pasta. Like, it can't be any easier and any better for you than that. And I'm using a double O flour, which is very fine grind, which means the texture will be really nice chew when it's even fully cooked. Right? This is an Italian flour. It's their grating system. So you have this. 
you toss it with a little bit of flour, and when you're ready, you put it right into the into the pot, right? Which we can do shortly. Shana, may I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, do you think it would work as well with uh, flour, like rice flour, for people that have oh, like, yeah. gluten yeah. tolerance? There are there are double O flours that are gluten free as well. You want to be careful with how gluey your flour is because it could make gluey pasta and then you could have a big sticky mess, right? And mm -hmm. no one wants a big sticky mess. So yeah. we've got our, it, there are gluten free uh, options though. Absolutely. Okay. We are making considerations, considerations for everyone. So we go back here and we check our soup out. And it's nice and tender. All the beets are cooked, right? We have it here and we're gonna pop it into our blender. I won't uh, kill you with the noise. I'll just do it for a second, I promise. <laughs> so beets, liquid, everything inside, right? Put your lid on. Don't fill your blender more than about a third full if it's hot, because it will blow the top off. And uh, you could have another question. Beet. Another question. Yep. Uh, can we use another vegetable puree to make the pasta instead of beets? Yeah, you can use uh, a spinach puree, you can use a tomato puree. If you have a vegetable that has more water, you want to hang out some of the water so that it becomes a paste like this, right? You want it to be a nice thick paste. Mm -hmm. If it's a thick paste like that, then it can be almost any vegetable you can dream of. You don't want to use eggplant or zucchini, they're way too watery. But something with color and flavor, you could even do um, beet green pasta if you wanted to, right? So we've got our herbs here. We'll put those into the pasta in a minute. But for now, we're just going to really quickly. Okay, puree that. And we're going to add our coconut milk in. And just add a little at first. You don't want it to get too thin. We can add more after if we need. And it becomes this beautiful fuchsia color. All right, and then you have your beet soup ready. You just have to season it with a little salt and pepper. And we're gonna, as we mentioned, do a little citrusy garnish, all right? So this is, so in the coconut milk, some of you have seen, there is a thicker part and a thinner part, right? This is the thicker part. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest to it, right? Could, Just to give it a little be, bit of fresh. Could it be also orange or any other? Yeah, it could be a flavor. And you can make all kinds. You could do a pepper lime flavor, a little bit of pepper and salt. You just don't wanna have it plain, right? because you want to have a little bit of luster to your garnish for your soup. And then we're going to add a tiny bit of lemon juice to the soup as well. So we just squeeze that. Oh. Just put a couple of squeezes and it'll just take that edge of that, um, as you were saying, it was very sweet. It'll take the edge off that sweetness for it, right? Okay. So we're going to okay. plate that shortly. So we've got our pasta, we've got our sauce going, we have our soup ready. The last one I'm gonna show you, and it's the first one I'm gonna plate, is your um, carpaccio, which I haven't talked anything about. So we have these, <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? Who would imagine good television? Here we are. Oh my okay, God. so we have these beets which are cooked, right? So we have cooked beets, and you're like, how am I gonna get that into a carpaccio? It doesn't look like anything yet. So the wonderful thing about these, and some of the biggest waste in beets is if you peel them raw. If you peel them raw, then they lose a lot of skin. But if you peel them cooked, they actually just slip right out of the skin like that. I didn't know that. There's almost no waste, right? So uh, you just, if you just blanch them, then you can just really smooth off all the skin with hardly wasting anything. And you have these beautiful beets ready to use, right? Same with the red ones. So you get the idea. So you can peel your beets like so. Then you're gonna take out your trusty mandolin. If you don't have one, you can use a knife, that's fine. It just makes your life a little easier if you have a mandolin. 
So you have a mandolin like this. We take out our teeth because we don't want any teeth in it. And we're going to slice our beats, right? So you take your beat and you just... You don't have to make that noise. My students make fun of me for all the noises <laughs> I make. It is, uh, they don't forget it, though. It's funny, right? So you have your beautiful slices. And I've done some here, so we're ready to go, right? Then you're going to make a little vinaigrette. Super easy. You're going to take, we have a white balsamic, but you can use... Um, apple cider vinegar, you can use a, a white wine vinegar, you can use, you want to use something that's not dark so you don't color your beets, right? And we're going to take a little bowl, All right, we're just going to add our vinegar in. Will this be your up. lunch menu now? <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a great item to have for lunch. It is so light and fresh in the summer. So you're just going to have that. And I have a little walnut oil here I'm going to add in. Because we're going to add walnuts to the salad, giving you a little bit of protein. So you'll see in the plant base, you want to make sure you're adding. The greens have some protein, but you want to add a little additional protein. You don't want your plant-based folks being hungry because they get angry, right? <laughs> As do I without any protein. So you're just going to mix that up, crack a little pepper in there, put a pinch of salt, super easy fast, and we've got our dressing, right? So I have these beautiful local seedlings and some flower petals I'm going to use. Our beets, we've got some toasted walnuts here, um, just in the oven for like five minutes. The reason you do it in the oven is because it brings out the oils and the nuts, right? Rather than just um, uh, tossing them on a pan in the stove, which a lot of chefs will do, that ends up just burning them on one side. What we want to do is just bring out those natural, beautiful flavors of oils and uh, have them, it just changes the flavor of the nut so quickly. So we've got some pear here. We've got some greens, we've got some beets, and we're ready to plate. So I'm just going to show you all the plates right now. I'm going to bring them all over and show you how to finish these off, okay? So our first plate, I'm going to do is I am going to put the beets down into a little pan. Oh, I like the shape of this plate. Right? A little bit of fun. Pretty it's cool. fun to do a little bit of different if you can find something, because especially if all the things on your plate are round, you want to do something that's a little bit uh, square maybe, right? Think about shape, texture, color, and you put all of those things in your head, you're going to come out with some beautiful plates. So carpaccio is just a thinly sliced, usually meat or fish, but today we're doing thinly sliced beets, right? So we take this, make sure you dress it well. You want to make sure that the flavor is on those beets. And you could even toss them in this a little bit earlier and then plate them when you're ready. Then you're going to take your greens. Shana, is also there a name for this salad? Uh, so this is just seedlings, right? So this is baby sunflower seeds, baby kale, baby beets, baby daikon. And you can pick whichever one you like and just, you can purchase these in grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And they add lots of flavor and beautiful color and texture to your plate, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your pears, everything on your plate should taste beautiful on its own, right? And it makes it really easy to make pretty plates with um, flower petals and seedlings. And of course, don't forget your beautiful toasted walnuts. All right, just a few pieces on there. But again, it's going to add a little bit of protein to something that's a little bit uh, plain. You can swoop it out a little bit. And that's plate number one, right? Ready to go really quickly. Can you send over to Hungary? Yeah, I'm actually going to put it into a... Uh, I'm going to ask Amazon if they can ship it for me. Perfect. <laughs> so they seem to do everything, right? Okay, our Perfect. next plate we're going to do is our soup. 
So I'm going to take just a simple white bowl. Try not to get fancy dishes and bowls if you're planning on purchasing. And I'm just going to pour the soup right in. Look at that color, right? That's nice so texture. Cool. Oh, my God. All right. Really nice texture. And then we have that lemon coconut, uh, coconut cream almost it is, right? So you want to give a little bit of richness to it. And you can it's get as fancy. Like from the person who knew it, it reminds me the color of a cherry soup. Like here in Hungary, the yeah, exactly. this sweet cherry soup, it reminds well, me of the color. You, absolutely. It's like a, a fun play on, on, on a borscht, right? Yeah. So you can take a little bit of parsley and just green it up a bit if you want. You could also add dill would be a great flavor to this. And then you're going to add your crispy bits in. Because some people say soup's not anything without crackers. So that's your soup, okay. right? Super easy. Amazing. You can have the soup ready, right? And it is super yummy. And then we have our pasta. So we've got our our carpaccio, our soup. Are people just sitting there waiting, waiting to get fed? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, everyone is just like uh, amazed. Okay, so for our pasta. We've got it here, and we're going to add the last minute, just a little bit of uh, rosemary and some parsley into it, right? Because we've dropped our pasta in the water, and it's all nice and tossed. It's that beautiful flavor in it, right? We don't want to go crazy on portioning, but you want to make sure you get those greens and lentils in there. I know what I'm having for dinner. So yeah. good. <laughs> okay, so that's our three dishes. Um, I'd love to field some questions if anybody has any on sort of how-tos or um, what they could use as alternates or anything like that. I could happily a, answer those. There was a question, but I didn't understand. I asked for some clarification, like yeah. how he um, – wrote was how to define others it is a sustainable dish i didn't quite understand what how to define others yeah like how to define others it is a sustainable dish i think maybe oh, how, to yeah, define, uh, how, how to tell them this is sustainable i get it yeah. okay i absolutely understand so here i am and i'm having people over or people are in my restaurant and they want to say well how is beet sustainable well, because, one, they're local. It's from a market uh, about three kilometers away from my house. Two, I'm not wasting anything, so I'm using all the product by using the greens, using the whole beet, and nothing but the beet. So you bring this out and show them and say, there was nothing wasted, which means this is a sustainable practice in cooking, right? That's the easiest way for people to understand it, I guess, right? Any other questions? Uh, kind of through everything. <laughs> I think uh, they asked what's the name of the salad, but maybe they are referring to the carpaccio or not. Oh, okay, yeah. So this is yeah, the carpaccio. So on the salad, it's just a little seedling salad, a mini seedling salad with uh, pears and walnuts, right? So the seedlings can be any kind. I have them growing in my garden right now, but there's lots of great companies um, that grow uh, like watercress and kale and arugula, just little baby seedlings. And they have lots of punch and flavor in them too. Um, I, uh, Anything the else? The same okay. person that asked about the sustainable uh, sustainability, yeah. he meant that uh, how to talk about it. I think like if uh, maybe he's a chef, so how he would oh, okay. introduce that this is a sustainable dish. Okay, so I would just have people, if you wanted to, teach it it depends if you're teaching it or if you're a chef in a kitchen um the way to talk about it is to have people do it always the most engaging way to get people to learn and understand things is by doing it showing them how you could waste a lot of beets if you do it one way but the way we're cooking here is we're doing zero waste so although i cut out the edges of the beets here i use those edges to make my soup and although i trim the greens off making the soup I put it into my pasta. And for them to start to understand that um, helps people understand sustainability a little bit better. Amazing.
There is also mm-hmm. another question from Chef Sam Glass. Uh, oh. uh, would you add a little acid to the boiling pasta water to pull out the red color of the beet? Yeah, you could. You absolutely could. Great point. Acid to red will really lift up the color a lot. Um, I didn't this time because there's so much beautiful color in this pasta already. I'm just going to turn off my pasta water so I don't uh, burn up my stove. Uh, but yeah, because if you look at the pasta that I made, I'm going to pull it out here. Sing my whole kitchen and all. So it has this beautiful color, right? It is have a bit of flour on it, and I hung it on a wooden doweling that I have yesterday. And uh-huh. this pasta, you can even freeze it now if you want, and then just throw it in the water from frozen, and it takes, again, two, three minutes, and it's cooked. And that color stays pretty brilliant when it's cooked, right? Which is amazing. Any other fun questions yeah. we got? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what ingredients of the dish can be easily grown at home? Uh, The beets can be easily grown. You just need something that has a deep enough to grow a root vegetable, and you'll have that. Onions and garlic you can grow at home as well, all sort of in the same uh, temperature zone. I'm not a farmer by any means, but I have my balcony and my entire downstairs filled with pots of things that I can make and do. I've got my cucumbers and tomatoes and beans and things coming now. Um, I love beets. I could eat them, as you can see in all kinds of ways, but you can grow these yourself. The flour is brought from a mill that's just not far from here as well. So knowing that even your flour to make your pasta source locally is great too. Amazing. On a personal note, like I still, like I, when I was a child, I used to drink it like very often. And until today, I love beetroot juice. So yeah, yeah. I love it. yeah. If you want to do a cleanse, I did it usually for three days. If you just feel like you're sort of weighed down, beet greens, carrot, and celery. Ju- just not even. Yeah, you can do juiced or puree, and it's uh, a cleaner upper. You feel I like you're light, right? <laughs> uh, there is a question. So, what optional beverages does it complement with? A, a mean a oh. good mix? With beets, you would want ah, for a beverage. I would actually do a beautiful alcoholic or non-alcoholic. I'll say non-alcoholic first would be like a lemonade something. But if you were doing a little bit of fun to give that tart against the earthiness, you could do a nice smoky bourbon lemonade and have that with it on a hot day. Yeah, it would be delicious. Um, there is people asking if you could do a dessert as well. <laughs> Yes, I was going to. I just I was away for the weekend, so my plan was to take this beet puree I had, and you can make it into delicious brownies or cupcakes that are completely oh vegan. God. I know brownies, and then the topping, the icing is like an avocado icing that is vegan as well. And I was like, hi, I'm probably going to do it tomorrow because I still have beet puree. So <laughs> those are some great options. If you want to do a four course, I just didn't. I think in uh, 30 minutes or so, we would have time to get to dessert. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you think you can make uh, available later on, if it works out well, the cupcakes and the brownies? I'm very Yeah, happy. sure. Yeah, sure. I'll test them first, though, because I don't like to post recipes I haven't tried. And I much prefer to show people than tell them about it. So I will Amazing. absolutely get on that and share it with you after you can post it to the Instagram or to World Chef site, wherever. If anyone wants it, I'll have it ready. Amazing. Kate is asking if that would be a, a red velvet beetroot uh, muffin. It can be, because uh, it, ju- it just makes it red, but red velvet is a very particular flavor, which is not my favorite, but you can make like a fudgy, delicious brownie and add in like beautiful um, fair trade chocolate into it, and it's like fudge with beet in it. I am thinking I might make it today. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. We don't have any questions. You have a lot of appreciation, like thanking that was excellent, the presentation, Good. thanking to you very much. That looks delicious. So I think ninety yeah. percent of the Thank comments are like this. Well, I'm I'm hoping they're doing uh doing well on their ten day challenge, those who are doing the Food Heroes Challenge. Um, I'd like to thank you, Lucas. You've been amazing, because otherwise it would be a whole lot of me and a, a little bit dry. <laughs> you make it much more engaging. And thanks to my hubby behind the camera who's taking care of things. Thank you on very that much. Side. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's happy to help out and uh, share this information with everyone. 
So if anyone has any more questions, I mean, they can go to the, I guess, the Instagram page. You'll fill them in on those kind of things if they want to know more. Um, I am on Instagram at Chef Shona. It's not complicated. You can probably find that if you're looking for it. And uh, I love food. That's what I do. I'm the uh, local Toronto chef uh, president of our Chefs Association. I teach at Humber College here in Toronto. And then I also am the vice chair for Feed the Planet and Sustainability. So that package <laughs> together is just all about food, right? So now, just like before we, we finish, like, uh, would you mind if we could just like uh, zoom, like take the camera to each dish and just wrap up what's inside or like summarize sure. what went in each of them? So later sure on, can. the, the we'll live go goes saved, yeah. people will be able to, to know. We'll go to one dish at a time and I'll explain each of them so that okay. they can see later for the live. I'll also take uh, still shots for everyone and I'll post them to my page as well. So this one here is our beet carpaccio. Right, so the beet carpaccio is uh, sliced beets. You just boil them, peel them, sliced in any shape you want. You could do triangle squares. I did a little waffly cut. And then you're gonna do a walnut vinaigrette with a seedling salad and some pears. And make sure you toast those walnuts that are with it because it brings out the oils in the flavors of the walnuts and it tastes totally different. Any kind of pear or apple would be great with this, nice and crisp right, so that it adds a little bit of crunch to it because you don't want it to be soft tasting. <laughs> Next, we have our soup, right? So our beet puree, uh, completely vegan. This is just onions, garlic, beet, right? Saute it off, add in some vegetable stock, finish it with some coconut milk, and then a little bit of lemon juice and uh, lemon zest. We have some beautiful crispy chips on top and a little bit of parsley just to add some freshness to it. And you can add other vegetables if you choose. You could add in fennel and parsnip and all kinds of wonderful things. But this color and flavor is so of the season right now, and it goes well into the fall. And then the last one is our pasta dish. So this is our meat and potatoes for our plant-based folks. So this is the beet pasta with beet greens and lentils. Roasted garlic again. You could even add in a uh, plant-based cheese or add nutritional yeast on top of it to give it that sort of harm flavor finish. Uh, if you wanted it to be a, a meat dish, if you were doing some meat and some alternatives, you could add in pancetta or sausage or any of those things into it. But as a plant-based dish, it is complete as it has protein and your veggies and your starch in proportion all in it. So amazing. that's our three dishes. <laughs> It's perfect. Thank you very much, Ron. It was a pleasure to watch you. It was really, really great. And I think Glad that to for sure I will try during the weekend. Let's see if I can get <laughs> well, at least 10% close. <laughs> yeah, you've got the recipe. The soup is super easy, right? And if you're making the soup, you can do the salad. You don't even have to do it into slices. If you wanted to do it into chunks and do sort of a, a tossed salad, you can have the chunks of beets with greens, like bigger greens, and then toss them in with the same vinaigrette and make it sort of a composed salad too, right? Instead of the carpaccio. So you can do an alteration if you didn't want to do the sliced really thin, because I like them in chunks as well, right? So lots of fun to play with. It's been so exciting. And I know what I'm having for lunch and for dinner. So. <laughs> I'm having soup for lunch and pasta for dinner, maybe a side salad. So. All righty, well, much. see y'all later and um, next time we're live and good luck yeah. on your Food Heroes Challenge, and we'll talk to you soon.